If you watched my last breadboarding video, I went over how to make a sample and hold circuit. If you haven't seen it, link in the description below. In this video, we are going to add a common feature seen on sample and hold modules, a noise source. First, let's look at the schematic. The noise is generated by these two transistors here. Now, I'm no expert as to why it works, but it has to do with leaving the collector of this transistor open. The rest of the circuit is pretty straightforward. Capacitor and resistor to remove DC bias, and some amplification to boost the signal to Eurorack levels. Adding this to the previous sample and hold circuit would look like this, with a quad op amp chip being used. Now let's breadboard it. To begin, take the breadboard module made in the last video and separate the breadboard from the faceplate for easier access. Now with that out of the way, the dual op amp chip needs to be swapped with a quad op amp chip. positive and negative connections moved to the appropriate pins and the connections to the amplifiers themselves moved to the new locations. Longer wires used as needed. This red wire was a mistake. It should be connected from positive 12 volts to the emitter on the 3906. It was fixed before connecting power. Now that moving the existing circuit is done, we can add the components for the noise generator. First, let's place the two 3904 transistors on the board, then the 47K resistor from the collector on the first transistor to the emitter on the second transistor, and the connection on the first transistor to ground. Now the 2.1 microfarad capacitors. And the ground reference resistor to the positive input on the op amp. The 4.7K resistor from positive 12 volts to the collector on the first transistor. And the amplifier feedback circuit for the op amp. These values might vary depending on the transistors and your op amp. And with that, the addition to the sample and hold circuit is done. The faceplate can be brought back in and the wires and jacks reconnected. Now we power up this board and connect to the jack marked noise. And there you have it, white noise. Now to start part two of this video, a headphone amplifier so you can actually hear all the sounds you're making. First let's look at the schematic. Inputs come in here and are mixed together through 100k resistors. This capacitor removes DC bias and this op amp lowers the impedance of the signal. Then the output volume is controlled by this 10K audio taper potentiometer, another op amp stage to drive the output, and a DC blocking capacitor, the signal exiting through a stereo jack here. Now to breadboard it. First step is removing the faceplate from the breadboard module, as there needs to be some modifications done. First is to remove the 100K linear potentiometer and replace it with a 10K audio taper potentiometer. You know it is an audio taper there's an A next to the listed value, a linear taper will have the letter B. Once the potentiometer is mounted, a stereo jack can also be mounted to the faceplate. I already had a hole drilled from a previous project, so I used that. Now to add some wires to be able to plug the new parts into the breadboard, we are done with the modifications. To start breadboarding the circuit, 
we add the op amp chip and then its power connections. Since both amplifiers are configured as unity gain followers, a jump is placed from the outputs to the negative inputs. Then a 10 microfarad capacitor and a ground reference resistor. Next are the four input resistors. Make sure each one connects to its own separate bus. If you want to expand this idea to a more traditional mixer, more audio taper potentiometers could be added like this to achieve that effect. If we are going to keep things simple here, just use fixed value resistors. Let's bring the faceplate in. Screw it into place. And with the final step being connect the potentiometer and the jacks to match the schematic. Well, let's not forget the DC blocking capacitor on the output, shall we? And there we have it, one headphone amplifier. Now let's power it on to see what it can do. And just to show that it can drive a pair of headphones just fine. Well, that's it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed, and thanks for watching.